Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Larry Watkinson. I'm the fire chief uh, here in the city of Penticton. I'm also representing the BC Wildfire Service here today uh, to deliver the Engine Boss course um, uh, as a structure protection specialist. Uh, we are also here um, under COVID, strict COVID protocols uh, as a class that we are filming this class for those viewers online that uh, will be able to uh, view these sessions uh, to meet uh, the provincial requirements for uh, limiting exposure for this type of online learning class. This is the uh, uh, first online Engine Boss course that we've delivered, so please bear with us as we try to stick handle the uh, complexities of trying to deliver a face-to-face uh, uh, -face program uh, and convert it onto an online session. There will be five sessions available to you, uh, online students, uh, through a platform that you'll get through registration and you'll be able to view those components at your leisure to be able to work through it prior to completing uh, day two registration. Um, I'd just like to recognize uh, my counterparts here, uh, Brent and uh, Chad, uh, Brent Watson with Col West Kelowna Fire Department, Chad Gartrell with West Kelowna Fire Department. They will also do their introductions when they come on to do, do their delivery for, the, for this workshop also. Um, but very importantly, uh, I just want to say, because we have gone through such strict protocols getting into this class uh, with COVID uh, evaluations, uh, temperature checks, and to meet the provincial requirements, uh, we, we, unless your agency requires you to wear a mask, uh, that is up to you because we are social distance, we are safe in this environment. It has been completely fogged and sanitized this environment. There's been no other public access to this room and uh, we are uh, accepting you to take off your masks if you choose to do so, as I will now, because I'm very hot with this on. Um, I'd like to also reflect on how this course came to be. Uh, this program was uh, built uh, at a, at a, uh, over a, a beer napkin, honestly, and, and with the, the partners here uh, behind me down in Reno in 2017, no, 16, I guess it would have been, and, uh, and we were evaluating how we respond to wildland urban interface, interface fires as structural fire departments and the gaps that were uh, incurred out in the field and the processes and the communications and the common terminology. Uh, so we, you know, after that, that, that symposium down in Reno, uh, we decided that we'd try to come together as a group and provide some what we figured is uh, general knowledge or good knowledge for deployments uh, to wildland urban inter inter interface fires. Uh, working with the BC Wildfire Service, the Office of the Fire Commissioner and the BC Fire Chiefs, we were able to collaborate and come together to, uh, to identify what would be best practices and maybe one day complete as standard in the province. So um, this course today is being hosted by the Office of the Fire Commissioner. Um, we were the curriculum developers for the Wildland Urban Interface uh, uh, symposium here in Penticton over the last number of years and it's now being recognized as what we like to consider as a provincial standard or be best practice for deployment to wildland inter interface fires. Um, so it's very important that we recognize uh, all of the people that were part of this, you know, the agencies, the provincial agencies, the Office of the Fire Commissioner, BC Wildfire Service, the BC Fire Chiefs Association and of course our, our little symposium here in Penticton that ended up being quite large. Uh, and well attended. So we're excited to be able to do that and continue doing that and delivering this training for you out uh, in the field and around the province. What to expect as views for you viewers at home. Uh, there will be five sessions available for you to watch and view uh, and complete at home. Uh, you'll receive a username and password uh, after you register for the course from the Office of the Fire Commissioner Administration. You must complete this program, these five sessions, before you move on to day two which is going to be a practical day meeting COVID requirements. So as you register for day two, you'll be, re you'll be retained inside your pod of the engine that you respond to the course in. You'll be assigned into a task force and you'll be monitored and supervised by one of the task force leaders slash instructors for that program. The program that you'll be viewing online is not interactive. You will not be able to ask questions to us, the instructors, hence the reasoning why we're filming this class today with all these great minds in the room, we should be covering off the majority of questions that you as a viewer may be thinking to ask yourselves. And the reasoning why we're doing it this way is to meet the COVID restrictions. 
the province has identified this as essential training. Coming into wildfire season, we wanted to make sure that we were able to deliver this program out to those that are going to be engine bosses in the field on provincial deployment so that we're safe and effective and more operationally ready in the field. The, these day two sessions will be delivered regionally. So those that are participating in day two shouldn't have to travel more than one hour to attend the course. Hence, no more overnight stays and congregating in a hotel. So it's really come and leave that class in one day and have very limited travel. So we're going to be delivering this course all around the province and all the different uh, regions of our province to be able to meet those demands. I'd like this to identify some of the efforts that we've put together with uh, the Structure Protection Group, uh, which is led by the Office of the Fire Commissioner and the BC Wildfire Service. Um, we have a number of programs inside that. This one is the Engine Boss. This is the base level leadership course that you'll be, uh, that you'll require to be out in, a, in an engine and lead that engine in a deployment. We also offer the Task Force Strike Team Leader Program, which is the, the program that is basically oversees task forces or strike teams in a wildland urban interface deployment. Uh, we also have created a division supervisor, a group supervisor role, which is a, a middle management within the branch of structure protection overseas task forces. And then uh, we also have the, the branch director course, uh, which is a, more of a mentorship program, uh, but it is also something that we deliver here at the symposium. Also like to recognize uh, the structure protection specialists that we work very closely with in the branch of structure protection, which will be explained more later in the program. But they are uh, the specialists when it comes to sprinklers. Uh, they work very collaboratively with you in the field uh, as a synergized effort to become, uh, well, to, for structure protection purposes. So that's basically the, the foundation of the, uh, the program itself. Um, as you can see here on your desks, uh, we've provided this class with uh, student manuals. Um, and online, for those viewers at home, you'll be able to download all these documents uh, to build your own manual at home. Uh, inside this manual, you'll find a lot of field guides, uh, ICS forms that we're going to talk about in this course, uh, samples of daily time reports so that you're not confused on how to fill those out, samples of T cards and accountability systems. You'll see in here uh, all the PowerPoint presentation slides that will be available for you to print at home. And you can make your own binder and make it your own for your own field guide as, a, as an engine boss when you go on deployment. So that's basically the introduction of this course. Um, we're going to get right into the session one here. Um, is there any questions from the group before we get started? Excellent. OK. Anything from the two of you guys? OK. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll try to come to you with the mic so the rest of you viewers at home can uh, pick up the question. Okay, so we're going to talk session ones on deployment, pre-deployment, and we kind of get into post-deployment also. But really, like I've explained earlier today, the engine, this engine boss course was built for the purposes of municipal structural fire departments. Uh, not wildland necessarily, but I'll tell you something. In 2018, 2019, in Oliver, for the first time ever, we integrated IA unit crews into task forces, municipal structural task forces. And it was probably one of the most progressive changes I've seen on a wildfire deployment when it comes to uh, building a task force because we saw synergies between wildland firefighters and structural firefighters working together and learning from each other. So it was a great opportunity for us to work together and learn from each other how to, you know, what hoses adapt to what pieces of apparatus, uh, how wildland firefighters view the, uh, in the interface, and how do structural firefighters view the interface, and how we can work together. And those guys carry drip torches, which can be very handy to burn off around homes when we're doing anchor and hold tactics, which are, can be a very good operation. Uh, but this really is built, this program is built for you, those uh, uh, that are going to be on deployment, running an engine company, being, you know, a type one engine, or a tender truck or a type six wildland unit. Uh, for those of you so that you understand the tactics that are being deployed by the task force leaders in the field. So that there's that common terminology so we understand each other's language and how to communicate with each other both within your task force and those with the, the BC Wildfire Service, air to ground operations, etc. That's really why we built this program out. 
So as I discussed earlier, day one's really about uh, these five sessions. Uh, we're going to go through them all. We'll have breaks in between. And for those viewers at home, uh, you'll be able to uh, watch the, the, we're hoping to be 90 minute sessions, write a short quiz just to verify your learning. And then you can move on to uh, session two, three, four, five, as you feel fit or as you find the time. A day two, like I can explain, will be in the field COVID compliant. You'll be coming regionally. We'll be traveling around the province to deliver this workshop and you'll be able to uh, participate in a task force as an engine company and operate as an engine boss. Once you complete that course, the instructors will validate you through the job performance evaluations and you will come out with a certification as an engine boss. There will be no mentoring or counseling, while well, there will be still mentoring and counseling in the field, but you will actually come out as a certified engine boss uh, for deployment purposes. I think as we talk about who an engine boss is, um, typically those that are being deployed on deployment are at a leadership level within their organization. Everybody in this room holds some level of leadership within your organization. And that's really what we're striving towards is the mindset, right? The leadership mindset is crucially important. Understanding your roles and responsibilities, functioning as part of a larger team, understanding you know, how you fit within the task forces, or a strike team that you may be deployed on. You may even be deployed into a task force that you may hold a different level of ICS responsibilities, like say logistics. We need a place to park our fire apparatus tonight, or we're gonna need to put up some shelter because it's uh, too hot out and we need to get some shade. So you have to be open-minded to actually working at different levels and capacities within your, your task force itself. Um, Understanding leaders' intent, we're going to have uh, our incident commander, uh, Kim Janowski, come up later in this presentation and talk about expectations. Uh, but really, um, understanding why you're there and the mindset of structure protection uh, and working as a synergized effort between, you know, structure defense operations, structure protection operations, working with your, your sprinkler units, uh, and also working with your div soups in BC Wildfire Service, air operations. Um, like I can talk with Joel here. Joel and I worked on the first night of the Christie Mountain Fire together and knowing each other and being able to communicate with each other very clearly and trusting each other's responsibilities, we were able to very much effectively fight that fire at a lot of levels and knowing each other's skill sets it went so far down the road, we were able to just rely on each other to do each other's work, uh, but also then coordinate and work together really well. Yeah. Yeah, Chief, I'm just gonna jump in there, uh, leader's intent. Um, I think for the purpose of this class, uh, engine boss, it's absolutely critical. Any thoughts around the table as to what that would mean as an engine boss? Like what, why you think that's so important and where you would potentially be getting that from before you actually go out and action and fire? Any ideas? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, just an idea about leader's intent. Um, I think it's got to work its way down through the chain of command for sure and um, make sure that we get that all the way down to the bottom you know base level whether it's firefighters or uh, initial attack crews or what have you and have them all working together towards a, a common goal um, put together by an incident commander or whoever the leader is Let's just this down. yeah awesome exactly i think one of the key things you're going to find just on some of the deployments that i've been on with leaders intent uh, during that first operational period, you're not going to likely have an IAP prepared. So you're not going to get that high level strategic statement as what the, the task purpose and end state is for that incident. Where you're going to get it potentially, and you better get it this, in this uh, format, is in a briefing from your task force or your STEM leader. Okay? And what that means to you as an engine boss is knowing that when you're out there, because you may not have your task force leader always in close proximity to you, you're going to radio comm, but they may not be there. It's knowing what to action, what to not action, knowing how to manage your safety. And that's the, the total priority. Basically, in a nutshell, is to prevent freelancing. Do we really need to stretch 200 feet of inch and a half uh, out into the black in the middle of the night to put out a smoldering stump? No, our job is to protect structures, and we'll get into this in safety. But again, it's just like that is your test, that's your litmus test as to what you, as a single resource engine boss, what you can do or what you can't do, and what's safe, what's not safe, in accordance with what your mission is. Okay. Any doubt on that? Good. Thanks. Okay, so as we talk about um, process, uh, your your department, if you're being on deployed, if you're being deployed, 
will be on a list with the Office of the Fire Commissioner and they typically use the nearest and best asset to, to respond to wildland fires um, and not to uh, pull out local resources either uh, to, so that we don't basically uh, isolate uh, an area that's under fire.